The US inflation report last week came in higher than expected. On top of that, it was also higher than the rate we saw in February of 3.2%, as well as higher than what the economists were hoping for. Therefore, what we now know is the Fed is not going to be reducing the interest rates as many times as the market was anticipating at the beginning of the year, with the expectation up to six rate cuts. What we do now know is that as inflation is getting hotter from the previous year, those cuts that the market is anticipating has been now reduced to one at a very maximum, with the expectation being mid-September's meeting we could see an initial rate reduction. However, this is not something that is guaranteed, and in fact there is the idea being floated around that we will see no rate cuts in 2024. On top of that, we are seeing news of a Middle Eastern conflict getting larger and larger with the President of the United States expecting there to be an attack in the Middle East region. And we can see how the market has reacted to this data just on Friday alone as the market closed for the weekend. The majority of stocks are trending downwards with a lot of them coming towards their 52 week lows. So in today's episode, we are taking a look at six undervalued dividend stocks for you to consider for your portfolio. As always, we're going to look at each one of these dividend stocks' historical performance. We're going to look at their dividend safety. We're going to look at their supporting financial metrics, their free cash flows, their net debt to EBITDA. And as always, we're going to run them through the valuation model getting to our own intrinsic value, looking at our acceptable buy price, factoring our investor margin of safety, and look towards Wall Street to see what they are forecasting for the next 12 months for these companies with a lot of upside. So let's jump straight into dividend stock number one. We have CVS Health Corporation. Now it is down over 8% over the last 12 months. We do see it near its 52-week low with a yield of just below 4% a forward P just over eight with both seeking alpha analyst and Wall Street considering this a buy now. In terms of its performance over the last 10 years as well, whilst this doesn't include dividends reinvested, we do see it down 5%. In fact, its all-time highs does sit somewhere away at over $107 back in August 2015. So in terms of the dividend safety, we have a score of 90. It does look to be very safe. Market cap, $86.5 billion, a large cap company. Looking at those recessionary metrics for those that see a recession inbound, well, last recession, they increased the dividend during the 07-09 crash. They had recession sales, negative 2.5%. Bear in mind, the S&P's average growth was negative 12, and they also outperformed the S&P, negative 38% return, with the S&P bringing in negative 55 Dividend growth for last December, 9.9% increase. Very nice to note. Over the last five years, they have at a minimum kept up with that 4% rate that we always advocate on the channel just to keep up in line with inflation. Over the last 20 years, however, strong double-digit growth from this company. And we do note they have only been increasing the dividend for the last two years, as we can see a period where they did maintain that dividend. And they have currently been paying a dividend for the last 27 years without a reduction. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, for those that are new, it states a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. So not only do we have our first undervaluation signal, but also this is one of the highest yields CVS has offered over this period. And we have a double undervaluation signal with the forward PE below the rolling five-year average of 9.9. And we also note that the healthcare sector does sit significantly higher at 17.1. Now, in terms of of the power ratio. As always, earnings data, it is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. We focus on the free cash flow. If you want to be industry specific, 40% for consumer retailers like CVS Health. My personal blanket rule, 60% or lower. So that gives me faith. Management can offer those double digit increases we love to see. Well, CVS pretty low, consistently below 40%. In fact, 2024, whilst it is expected to increase, it is only to 38%. And I would be surprised if this December we don't see a very high single-digit dividend increase or even a double-digit strong increase to those shareholders. Free cash flow per share, well, inconsistent, but over the longer term, it has increased. But we also want to point out that the free cash flow is expected to drop into 2024, just below $7. Sales growth, when we do our deep dives on this channel, we look as a minimum for steady moderate growth of 3 to 7%. Positive to note that they have in fact nearly had double digit growth to their top line every single year. The last two years are looking very strong and healthy at 11% back to back. 
Numerically as well, we can see they have more than doubled their top line over the period. What we love to see when we look at shares outstanding is when companies reinvest or return that excess cash to shareholders. However, what we note for CVS, they would have diluted your position over the last 10 years as we can see those shares outstanding have increased. So something to factor into your own investment thesis. ROIC, again, one of my favorite metrics. I do want to see 10% as a minimum just to give me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. What we know for consumer retailers, the industry sector does look around above 17%. CVS, it has lagged a little bit, although as my personal investing philosophy, 10% is nearly around that over the last three years. So for me, this would personally be acceptable. In terms of the margin, 10% or more for consumer retailers, we do know that they've consistently been below that 4%, which is fairly low in 2023 in comparison to their historical averages. So do keep an eye on that. Free cash flow margin, unfortunately, they haven't been above 6%, but again, it is pretty consistent around the 3 to 5% level. Finally, the net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before the interest tax, depreciation, amortization. We want to see below three for consumer retailers. Remember, these numbers are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand and correlate to both dividend safety as well as balance sheet strength. Now, 2023, pretty much around the three level. 2024, again, pretty much around that two. What I would say, given it is around the three level and the free cash flow payout is below 40% consistently, their dividend does look to be very safe and the balance sheet does look fairly secure based on this high level information. So let's jump into the valuation model. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, typically on the channel, we do deep dives. We run through every single model. Today's episode, which is a weekly recurring episode, let's jump straight in to the final calculation. Intrinsic then, it comes to $98 in today's episode. Remember, this is based on the average of the four models that you see above. With a current price of $68, we do start off our margin of safety at 10%. Why do we start off at 10%? Well, we use that and execute on that if we believe it meets three criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward looking data. And then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. So for CVS Health Corporation today, we see pretty much a bang on 30% margin of safety. How about Wall Street? Well, over the next 12 months, they see some significant upside. $89 is their price target. 30% is the upside that they've calculated. But as always, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below if you are buying any of these six stocks today or if at minimum they are on your watch list. Also, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article where we do run through 10 stocks with significant upside. If you want to gain access to this article or any of the others, all completely free, click on the pinned comment below and you can start reading straight away. The next undervalued dividend stock with some nice upside to consider for the portfolio is the Hershey Company. Now, we all know with the rising cocoa prices, this has taken an absolute battering down 28% over the last 12 months it is pretty much going right towards their 52 week low now their yield is just below three percent a forward p above 19 and over the last 10 years it is up 85 percent without including those dividends reinvested but we do note it has been trending down since the beginning of may at a price of 275 dollars but it does look to be undervalued and the dividend safety score coming in at 93 is very safe market cap 38 billion a large cap company now, interestingly, this is one that I do own, and it is one that, in fact, they maintained their dividend during the last recession. It is essentially flat in terms of their recession sales. They also outperform the S&P negative 30%, as we can see. Dividend growth, one of the reasons I do love this company. In fact, just a couple of months ago, they increased it by 15%. Over the last 10 years and over the last 20 years, on average, they do increase those dividends double digits. They have also been increasing those dividends for the last 14 years with 94 years of paying a dividend to the shareholders without a reduction. Now, again, we do see a double undervaluation signal, 2.95 on the yield. In fact, one of the highest yields they've offered over the last five years and nearing that 3%. And the forward P19 versus the five-year rolling of 24.3. We can see it is pretty much in line as well with the consumer staples at 19.1. So what is the free cash flow payout saying? Well, below 70%, again, industry specific for consumer staples. 2023, 59%, 2024 expected 65. No real worries with that dividend. Can start to see why it is a very safe dividend score as well. 
free cash flow trending upwards year on year, not massively consistent. Nonetheless, it is moving in the right direction. 2024 looking very healthy as well in terms of that jump from the previous year. In terms of the sales growth, inconsistent is what I would say. In fact, from 2015 to 2020, it was near enough flat if you were including inflation. Last three years, though, looking very strong between 7 to 16 percent. And numerically, we can see they have increased their top line from 7.4 to 11.2 billion. They do share buybacks, but one thing we would note is whilst they may appear to be consistent, it is very minimal and a little trivial. Nonetheless, still is a little bit of excess cash to your shareholder pockets. Now, ROIC, yes, it is downward trending, but in fact, from 2019, it has been pretty consistent in the mid-20s, which is very strong and healthy, even when you do consider the consumer staples industry sector sits around 12 to 13 percent. Now, margins, margins, margins. What we can say, operating margin above the 16%, also trending upwards, so operational efficiency, although it is marginal year on year, as well as the free cash flow margin, it does look very, very healthy. 14% in 2023 would be something that would be attractive to potential investors. They also have a very healthy balance sheet. We can see below four as the net debt to EBITDA target. 2023, 2024 expected around the 1.5 level, much lower than the four maximum we want to see. And again, we can understand when we incorporate the net debt to EBITDA as well as the free cash flow payout, why their dividend does look to be very safe as it nears that 3% level. Now, don't forget, you can grab a copy of this valuation model if you want to calculate the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or on your watch list by clicking on the pin comment below so margin of safety at a 10 percent level a buy up to 193 at 15 percent up to 183 not too far off the current trading price so we would say it has a near 15 percent mos level if you are looking for around 20 percent we can see you would be waiting around 172 so with a near 15% MOS level and Hershey's, we do see that the price forecast for Wall Street is indicating upside of 15% and their price target, numerically speaking, is $214. The next undervalued dividend stock that we have is APD, Air Products and Chemicals, not to be confused with ADP. Now, again, it is trading towards its 52-week low with a yield of over 3% and a forward PE just under 19. Over the last 12 months, while it has been battered down nearly 20%, over the last 10 years, however, it is up 116% and its all-time highs not too long ago over that $300 mark. In terms of dividend safety, well, another very safe dividend score at 95, market cap 51.5 billion. It is a large cap company. Now, in terms of the recessionary metrics, while they increased the dividend, they had below average growth, but they did also have a near S&P return at negative 52%. Dividend growth, very poor. In fact, this year, 1.1%, so below that inflationary target. Although over the last five years and the last 20 years at double digits is another reason why it is a bit disappointing to see that January increase. We do, however, note they are a dividend aristocrat. They have more than 25 years of increasing the dividend and they are nearing by nine years that dividend king status. So in terms of dividend yield theory, again, a double undervaluation signal, a very strong yield in comparison to the five-year average, and the forward P nearly one of the lowest it has had over the last five years. We also note it is marginally lower than the material sector P at 20.6. In terms of the free cash flow payout, one thing we would talk about is why we like the free cash flow payout. If you were to look at the earnings, you would be fairly happy below 60% or there or thereabouts. On the free cash flow, this signals to us from a period from 2017 to 2022, they were paying out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow. And one thing we would highlight here is in 2023 and expected next year, they are having a negative free cash flow, hence why we see that negative percentage, as can be confirmed in this graph. Free cash flow, very inconsistent as we can see, 2023 coming at negative 639 terms of sales growth, we want to see that 3 to 7%. In fact, 2021, 2022, strong double-digit growth, although we also want to point out the negative growth that they have had and are expecting in 2024. Numerically speaking, though, where has that top line gone? Well, it's gone from 10.4 billion. It did drop to 7.5 in 2016. Since then, it has been increasing, although very marginally, as we can see some periods where it does remain fairly flat. On top of that, pretty trivial, but we will also mention they would have diluted your position very marginally as they have increased those shares outstanding by around 8 million shares. ROIC, not too bad around that 10% level that we do target, but we can see nothing really strong as we have seen in previous companies. 
Operating margin, nice to know. Operational efficiency has increased over the longer term, although we do know over the last few years it has started to decrease. And the free cash flow margin, it does look healthy up to 2021, although we can see not only reducing in 2022, but no surprises given the information we saw earlier that it does have a negative free cash flow margin in the more recent year. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA, still looking very safe, so we can understand that it is 1.99. So something just to bear in mind that even though that their free cash flow is negative, their balance sheet does still look fairly strong with a 1.99 score on this metric. In terms of the actual dividends themselves, well, let's take a look at the valuation. So what we can see here is the intrinsic value is coming to $274. Now, a few things that we do want to point out, we can see Graham's valuation is indicating it to be very low, with the multiples indicating to be very high, given the fact that the large majority of companies in this sector do have a very high forward PE. In terms of the margin of safety, then at a score of 10, what we can see here, acceptable buy price, is coming to $246. When we keep going at 15 cent 232, so not too far off the current price. So at 15 cent MOS level, Wall Street are forecasting 17 cent upside with a price target of $269. In terms of the next dividend stock, we have Sanofi, ticker symbol SNY. Now, this is down 18% over the last 12 months. Over the last 10 years, down 11% and does offer a yield of around 4.44% and a forward PE sitting below 11 In terms of the dividend safety, again, the fourth one today, very safe score at 90. Market cap, $115 billion, a mega cap company. Now, key metrics, well, they increased the dividend during the last recession. They had above average growth, and they also marginally beat the S&P with their negative 42% return. In terms of dividend growth itself, 5.6% just last month, so above the inflationary target. Over the last five years, at a minimum, increasing it in line with inflation. And over the last 20, seven years, year on year, not too bad. They have also been increasing those dividends for the last 24 years. So next year, if they do increase the dividend, which we do expect to be the case, they will enter dividend aristocrat territory. In terms of dividend yield theory, well, again, a double undervaluation signal, both on the yield and the forward PE. We also note it is lower, in fact, much lower than healthcare sector at 171 so in terms of the free cash flow payout, again, blanket rule below 60%. We see it pretty much straddle along there around the last 10-year period. 2023, 2024, around the mid to high 60s as well. No real red flag indicators on that metric. Free cash flow per share, well, it has increased over the longer term. We do note a lot of inconsistency year on year. 2024 expected to be around the previous year, although slightly lower. In terms of sales growth, well, very inconsistent. In fact, sort of a trend where it increases and then decreases, increases and decreases. And in fact, the more recent year, a very mediocre increase of 1%. On the long term, they are increasing, however, going from 32 billion to 46. In terms of the shares outstanding, they have reduced those shares, although marginally. And in fact, since 2018, it has been fairly flat. So do bear that in mind into your margin of safety as well as your investing thesis. ROIC, we can note pretty much around that 10% level year on year. Operating margin, strong. It is above the minimums that we see, 20% in the more recent year. The same to be said for the free cash flow margin, looking fairly healthy. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA, one of the strongest we have reviewed today, 0 0.84 in 2023, 0 0.86 in 2024. So again, no worries with the balance sheet and that dividend does look to be secure. So let's get to the valuation and what we can see in today's episode, it is the average of these four coming to just under $58. Now with a margin of safety at 10%, we can see a buy up to $52, at 15% at 49, 20% 46. So around that, it isn't quite at a 25% MOS level yet. So around a 20 to 25, although it is more on the 20% side. In terms of Wall Street, well, they see this as incredible upside, a very strong buy now with average analysts expecting a price target over the next 12 months of $63 and upside of 37%. And as always, do let us know some of these stocks may not be the most popular in the community. So let us know if you are starting to add these onto your watch list. The next undervalued dividend stock is Kenview. Now, the first time we have taken a look at this on the channel. Now, what we can see here, it is down year to date around 11%. It is trading again towards its 52-week lows with a yield of over 3% and a forward PE sitting at 16.65. Now, given they have just started to pay a dividend given the spin-off, we do get a dividend safety score of 70. We can see market cap 36.6 billion. It is a large cap company. 
Now, in terms of looking at dividend yield theory, again, bear in mind the spin-off wasn't too long ago. We do see an undervaluation signal with a yield of 4.18, as well as a forward P trading a little bit lower than the rolling average of 17.1, and it is also lower than consumer staples sector at 19.1. In terms of the free cash flow payout, 27% in 2023, although we do see in 2024 it is expected to edge much higher, although still lower than the 70% that we want to see as a maximum for this industry. In terms of the free cash flow per share, well, it has increased from 2022 to 146, but we do know that it is expected to drop into FY24 to $1.24. In terms of sales growth over the last few years, it does barely make that 3 to 7% that we target. In more positive news, 3% was hit in 2023. But again, do understand the type of companies you are looking to invest in. Not all will be fast growing, which isn't the worst case. You may want to diversify the portfolio, but just better to understand so you have realistic expectations. We also see over the last few years their top line increase, and they also would have diluted your position as a shareholder, as we can see with the increasing share count. In terms of the ROIC though, no real issues to note consistently around the low to mid teens and 13% in the more recent year. In terms of the operating margin, again, nice to note above the minimum for consumer staples and the free cash flow margin does look very healthy and in fact has increased from 2022 to 2023. In terms of the net debt to EBITDA, no real worries there. We did see the safe dividend score. It is below four and in fact below two and expected to be there or thereabouts in 2024 in relation to FY23's number. In terms of the valuation then, let's get into that. The intrinsic value for today's episode is coming to a total of $23.23. .23. Margin of safety then at 10%, we see a buy up to $21, at 15% up to $19.75, not too far off. So after the significant drop it has had, we do see a 15% MOS level. In terms of Wall Street and their forecast, well, they expect a price target not too far off our intrinsic value at $23 with upside of 17%. We then draw your attention to Novartis, ticker symbol NVS. Again, towards its 52-week low, we have a triple buy signal here with a yield of over 4%, a forward PE over 13. And over the last year, it is up 2.4%. Over the last 10 years, though, we do see a bit of a roller coaster up 17%, with all-time highs sitting at $109 at the beginning of this year. Dividend safety score at 61, it does look to be safe. Market cap, 206 billion, a mega cap company. And we do see some metrics from the last recession. They did increase the dividend. They had above average growth and they also significantly outperformed the S&P up 30, or in fact down 31% versus the S&P, which was down 55. Dividend growth, they did increase it just a couple of months ago. 3.1, not the greatest, not too far off the inflation increase. However, last five years and last 20 years looking a lot better in those high single digit numbers. They have also been increasing those dividends for the last five years. In terms of dividend yield theory, we do see again that double undervaluation signal with the yield above the five year of 3.65 and the forward P below the five year average. In terms of the healthcare sector as well, it does come much higher at 17.1. In terms of the free cash flow payout, pretty much straddling the 60% year on year. 60% in fact exactly in 2023, expected to go slightly lower into 2024. In terms of the free cash flow per share itself, we do see it growing over the longer period. Not massively consistent either and we are expecting a marginal increase into FY24. In terms of the sales growth, we do see a very, very, very inconsistent progress here. We see three years of negative growth followed by three years of positive growth, and we see the trend continue. The most we can say is that FY23 did look positive at 7%, but when we do look at it over the longer term, we do see it as a very inconsistent company. In more positive news, they have returning a lot of cash by doing those share buybacks year on year. Again, although marginal, it still does add value to yourselves if you are a shareholder or considering to be a potential shareholder. ROIC, nice to note it has been increasing 17% looking very strong in the latest year and hopefully that is something that they will continue. Also nice to note the margins, not only above 12%, but also operational efficiency increasing over the longer term and the free cash flow margin, a very strong free cash flow machine. Last few years around the 30% looking very strong and attractive to investors. On top of that, the net debt to EBITDA below three and very strong 0.69 in FY23, 0.67 expected in FY24. So we can see Novartis does look like a very healthy company in relation to both dividend safety as well as their balance sheet. 
So in terms of looking at the valuation, let's take a look. We can see the intrinsic value in today's episode is coming to $107. So when we take a look in terms of the price, a margin of safety at 10% looks to be a buy at $96. At 15%, not too far off, but not at there just yet. So for NVS, ticker symbol, Novartis, we do see a 10 to 15% MOS level. In terms of Wall Street and their price forecast, well, over the next 12 months, as we can see, they have a target of $112. Upside 20% is what they believe. So there it is. We ran through six undervalued dividend stocks near their 52-week lows. As always, drop us your thoughts below. Are there any that you've been buying over the last few weeks? Are there any that are on your watch list? Or for whatever reason, for example, you're not interested in Hershey because you believe cocoa prices will continue to rise? Do drop your thoughts below and let us know. We will try and get back to every single one. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.